hello everyone i'm back again with another video today and today i will be talking about again the covid 19 data set but today we will uh, analyze the daily trend of the confirmed and recovered and uh, deaths that have happened uh, due to the covid 19 disease uh, we will use um, matplot matplotlib and plotly to visualize this data and python uh, specifically pandas library to process the data uh, in order to visualize it so uh, i'll i'll cover these three things in this video uh, first is uh, getting the covid 19 data uh, which i also showed in my previous video and then how to pre-process this data in the format that we need for this particular visualization and then thirdly creating a line chart uh, to visualize this trend and we will use both matplotlib and plotly i'll show you both ways how to uh, visualize uh, the trends so before i dive into the code i'll show you the final uh, visualization that we are aiming for so i have it open in a separate tab here so this is the daily trend for us and as you can see this is the delta of every day how many cases have come in so on some days they were around 30,000 cases and then it went down to 27,000 and currently it stands at 21,000 cases per day. So these are the confirmed cases that uh, we are getting in US. Okay, so with this in mind, uh, let's dive into the code and we'll see how this visualization is being created. Okay, so first of all, uh, we'll import all the dependencies, uh, the pandas library to process the data plotly for visualization as well as matplotlib for the visualizations as i showed you in my previous video these are the three urls that we will use uh, to get the data into our data frames so confirmed cases are in this file it's on github and it's maintained by johns hopkins university similarly we have recovered and death uh, data as well after setting these URLs, uh, we will import the data into data frames using the pd.read CSV function, uh, which takes the URL directly and loads the data for us into the data frames. Quite handy. You can see here uh, one of the data set that I've uh, just printed here. Uh, you can see the first five rows of this confirmed time series. Uh, you have country in this column latitude longitudes and then for every day you have uh, the number of confirmed cases for each country for some of the countries uh, there are multiple rows because they have multiple jurisdictions under their rule and uh, we will have to handle that uh, we'll have to aggregate those uh, rows so that our visualization can work for that particular country so as I mentioned, this visualization will show you the daily trends for a particular country that you choose and uh, we will see how we get there. So this is the view of the raw data. We have to convert it into such a time series so that we can plot it uh, into our line chart. First of all, we will need to transpose uh, this data set so that we have dates as rows and the countries as the columns so this data is only for the United Kingdom as you can see there are around 10 rows and all the 10 rows have been transformed into columns here and for each row over here in this raw data set here you have a column and we will just merge them into one single column by using the dot sum function so we will aggregate all these different states which come under United Kingdom into just one value. So you will have for 11th May, you will just sum up all the rows. So that's what we get here by summing up after the transpose function. You will get this series with all the daily data as it is a time series. It's, it is always increasing. We need to get the delta by using the diff function which gives you the difference between two subsequent rows so it will give you what was the increase or decrease on a particular day so for example if you see 
on 8th May you got 4,652 cases but overall on 8th May there were 21 sorry 212,000 cases I think this data uh, shows you uh, for United Kingdom yeah right and this is it we have our data in our Delta uh, differences format and now we just need to plot it uh, we use the dot plot function uh, we just plug it in uh, we just chain it using the dot operator and this is the plot that you get for United Kingdom these are the daily confirmed cases uh, for United Kingdom and similarly uh, you can see this for US as well so this plot shows it for US now I'll show you uh, how to create a function so that we can uh, plot for any country so I'm creating here another function uh, which will give us the moving average moving average is just a way to plot time series data to get the general trend over a course of time so if you have a three day moving average it will average the data points for three day windows and you will see a smoother curve instead of having a very uh, spiky looking curve you will have a very uh, smooth curve okay uh, so here I'm creating a function uh, which will plot the daily moving averages for any specific country that you pass in and also the smoothing uh, value over how many days you want to get the average so usually I set it to three or five days that that gives us a general trend of how the uh, cases are moving uh, I'm passing in the data to this function uh, we can plot data uh, we can plot the trends for the confirmed cases as well as uh, recovered and uh, deaths so we can pass it pass any of the time series data frames that we have uh, created above uh, over here so these three so coming back to this function uh, I've just taken what we discussed above and assigned it basically I just uh, did a dot plot on this data frame that we get out of all this processing and it will give back us the plot into this variable and I'm returning this plot now we will use this function uh, for example I'm using it for India for a smoothing window of 5 so this is what you see the trend for India for daily cases it's going up for United Kingdom diff it's uh, slightly going down now for US it's going up and down but the general trend is going down for Germany it's a very good uh, picture overall and they have got it under control I think similarly we can plot the data for deaths uh, uh, you just pass in the uh, the time series for a uh, number of dead uh, country as well as the window so I'm here using one just to show every day how many people died in US so at peak there were around 2700 people who died uh, comparing it to India at the peak there were around 175 people that died on a given day and Germany again around 500 people died at the peak and if you compare the population of Germany is 83 million and population of US is 328 million which is almost four times of Germany so you have peak of 500 in Germany whereas in US you had a peak of around 2600 so which is not exactly four times slightly more than that so but you have more people in US so it's very difficult to keep everybody locked down hopefully we'll get to what Germany is now in US as well and India also Okay, so now I'll show you how to do the same thing in Plotly. So I have just slightly modified our uh, moving average function here. Uh, basically, I just uh, I'm just returning a data frame instead of returning a plot. So all this is same, just that I'm converting it into a data frame and naming that column as total. This is what it looks like for the first ten rows. 
and then you have the px.line function in plotly which you can pass a data frame give the column name which you want to plot on y-axis column name which you want to plot on x-axis and the title and again as I mentioned in my last video this is just to center the center your title and this fig dot show will show your graph in line in the notebook uh, in my previous video I mentioned it were it was not working for me in my uh, Jupyter lab notebooks but today I created a new environment a new conda virtual environment and I installed it again and and good it's good news uh, it's working uh, I still like uh, to have a big plot on a separate tab so anytime if I want to do that I can just change the re default render to browser and when I run this code uh, you will see that this graph is uh, shown on a different tab uh, which is quite good also if you want to show a very high quality image uh, which is not interactive as you can see this, this graph is very interactive you can see what are the different values on given days but if you don't want that interactivity and you just want the plot in a very high quality graphics you can use SVG as your parameter in the fig.show function it will create a SVG uh, uh, image here and which you can save just by shift and right click and save this image you can also uh, show it as a PNG uh, but that will not be such high quality when you scale it it will look very blurry so all in all this is what I had for today I hope you have learned something new in this uh, video today and uh, I will upload this uh, notebook to github and uh, I hope uh, you guys will uh, subscribe to my channel and if you want to learn uh, more about uh, visualization in Plotly and Matplotlib as well as general data modeling, machine learning, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be creating videos uh, quite regularly and I hope to see you guys again in my next video. Uh, please leave any comments you have in the comment section and I'm just getting started so please pardon me for any uh, mistakes that I've made during the recording of this session. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Keep safe.